Welcome back on this Sunday morning with us now to talk about some of the issues that voters will be dealing with at the state capitol. We are joined by two freshman state senators, Saud Anwar, he is a Democrat, and Dan Champagne, he is a Republican. We thank you so much for being with us here today. And also, you. you both have a unique perspective because you're both mayors yes. of your towns, Vernon yes. and South Windsor. Yes. So. And then we are both good friends as well. Well, that always helps <laughs> get he's things. Also, he's also my doctor. Ah, well, <laughs> a lot of uh, personal connections here. That is great to, you know, great to hear. Let's talk first of all about, uh, we were just talking about David Lehman. Where do you stand on his nomination for uh, commissioner of the Department of Economic so, so Development? So last week when somebody had asked me, I said, based on the information I have, I will not support him. Uh, but I said I wanted to meet with him, and I've had about uh, four hours of meetings with him. And, and uh, what I did was in those meetings, I actually first learned about his involvement, his direct role in, in the economic disaster. And also, I had a chance to talk to the governor about what his vision is and how does David Lehman fit into his, uh, his vision. And, and subsequently was able to understand his skill sets and the capacity that he has. And, and after that, because I was not fully convinced, I had a meeting with a group of uh, citizens from my district and then had him speak to them and then clarify the issues and concerns we all have about his past. And, and with all of that, my no has become a uh, move towards a yes, but not reached yes yet. Senator Champagne. I have not met with Mr. Lehman, and he has not reached out to me yet. Uh, so I'm hoping at some point to speak to him. But at this point, I, I don't have an answer to that question. Because you just don't know enough about him. And right. Let's talk about tolls a little bit. Where do you stand on tolls? Because there seems to be universal Republican opposition to tolls of any kind. Right. I'm opposed to the tolls. And, and I'm opposed to the tolls because, you know, our, our working class uh, in Connecticut is already overtaxed. And this is simply, I look at this as another tax. I also fear that because we have no solutions to our uh, ongoing crisis here in Connecticut, that the tolls is going to be something easy to raise as the years go by. But when you look at the other states making millions of dollars off mm -hmm. of tolls, do you think there's a room for a compromise or maybe I, you would say, well, I'll support some tolls but not as many as you're proposing? Well, you know, we have the gas tax out there and the gas tax and, and, and a couple of the taxes are supposed to be paying for our infrastructure. So if you're going to bring in tolls, well, eliminate the gas tax or, or, or lower it to a point that, that we can have some uh, an equalization, I guess you could say. But that's not on the plan. The plan is also to raise the gas tax. And so, we're, you know, you can't just keep taxing our way out of our problems. We have to find a solution that's going to work to bring Connecticut uh, uh, spending under control. Senator Anwar, you have said in the past that you are for tolls, but yes. some of the uh, proposals call for tolls, you know, in the you know, 80s figure we're hearing, maybe 50 to, you know, gantries, what do, do you support? So, so uh, we look at it in principle. The, the reason we will need tolls is that we need to have actually an infrastructure that we need to build. This infrastructure that we have has to be maintained. That's part of our economic climate. That's a, a part of our uh, quality of life of our citizens. Now, while we do this, we also need to recognize that if we create strategies that majority of it comes from out of state, because when I travel to Massachusetts or New York, I'm paying for it. But when they're traveling to Connecticut, they're not paying for it. So I would want the trucks who are actually eroding our infrastructure and the cars to pay for it when they're coming out of state. But the ones who are in our state, if they use it multiple times, they should be a break for the citizens of Connecticut. And we need to identify a way that this does not become an extra tax, as, as uh, uh, Dan Champagne is suggesting, that we need to identify those strategies. Without them, it's going to be a little bit of a burden on our community, and we need to be able to create win-win strategies. Is it difficult to go against perhaps the will of some of the voters because a new poll came out this week by Sacred Heart University showing most people, I, I believe it was 59 percent, are against tolls? Well, because we also are a community that does not like changes, but, but at the same time, we have to make a plan not for one year, not for two years, but what are we going to do in the next 10 years? What is the strategy for a sustainable state of Connecticut for the next many years? And, and we have to come up with a responsible, uh, it's easy for everybody to say no, but are we doing the right thing? Are we going to go back in time and say, I wish we had done this? And that's why I look at it as a long-term strategy, but a responsible strategy. And then also with respect to the gas tax, if we reduce the gas tax, 
we will be able to help our citizens, but also encourage other uh, people from other, other states coming in and, and using more gas from our, our community, giving us a break from that end. And uh, this may not necessarily be bad for the state of Connecticut if we do this right. When people from Vernon, you represent part of Ellington as well, correct? Yes. You come up to you, what is their biggest complaint? What do they want you to do for them in Hartford? Right now, they, they do not want tolls. I, I haven't spoken to anybody that says, please bring the tolls. Uh, most people are telling me, uh, and, I, and I continue to say this, when I knock on doors, the biggest thing that I'm being told is when people are leaving our state. They feel they're overtaxed, they don't see an end in sight, and, and that's what they're viewing the, the tolls as, just another tax. What are some of the issues, other issues they're talking about to you? Uh, well, some of the other issues are uh, what's happening to our businesses. Uh, you know, uh, the $15 an hour. You know, you're look, we, we, they're looking at what's happening in other states. I have small businesses approaching me saying that they can't afford this. And in other states where it's been implemented, we're seeing a loss in jobs. But you're talking about the minimum wage? Yes, the minimum the wage. And, and I think right now with all the new taxes being proposed, at least under the governor's budget, they just see a never-ending um, never taxes. And you had said on your last appearance in this program, you do support the $15 minimum wage. Yes, and then, but it's not like you just flip a button and it becomes 15. It's actually going to go through in an organized fashion. That's what it is. But look, New York, the sky hasn't fallen in New York and neither in Massachusetts. However, the people, the average individual in the community, in the society, and average worker who's putting 40 hours, 60 hours, they're in a slightly better place. And that is our collective responsibility. If people are working full time and they still cannot afford a meal, we have a problem. So the businesses actually have flourished in other states where this has happened, and, and also because the people are able to spend more. So it, it, it's, it's an entire perspective. We can take slices through the picture, but let's look at the bigger picture of what's, what happens in a community. Well, let's talk about uh, sports betting. What should the state do in terms of getting a piece of it? Well, I believe that you know, the betting belongs with, the, with the, uh, the, our tribes. So only those two casinos. You know, you let support. the tribes run it because if we tried running it ourselves, we're going to end up spending. It's going to cost us more to run. That's. It seems like it, it costs the state of Connecticut uh, more money to run anything. So leave it with the tribes. Let them take care of all the necessary, necessary paperwork, all the uh, 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 agreements, and then just go ahead and pay us the uh, our, our portion of it, like they've been doing for many years. Do you support that? I actually completely agree with, with uh, Dan Champion on this as well. Uh, here's the issue. Um, the tribes have been good neighbors to the state of Connecticut. And, and there is a casino in East Windsor that we have been pro they have proposed and, and, and the state has agreed to. We need to stay the course. And, and, and we also have a responsibility to strengthen the tribe's position here so that our previous historical relationship strengthens and the financial opportunities for the state of Connecticut increase. So, so you don't yes. want to see sports betting at restaurants and clubs throughout well, the state? Well, right? I want that to be overseen by the tribes. Good enough. Saud Anwar, Dan Champagne, both senators, we thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for thank having you. us. When we come back, it's a very big day here on Channel 3. It's Selection Sunday. So what about March Madness? Will there be a Connecticut representative? We're going to talk with uh, one coach who would like to be a part of it if he can. And we welcome you to comment on today's program via social media. I'm on Instagram right now, Twitter, and Facebook.